entrance from the Dark Destroyer. His 14th world title fight tonight. And look at him in the black and white stripes of Newcastle. How to win friends and influence people. All the cornermen as well. And of course, a lot of the Newcastle United players are here among this sellout crowd of 10,000 beside the banks of the River Tyne. He says he loves the Geordies. They clearly love him, and he could hardly get a better reception here, even if his name was Les Ferdinand or Kevin Keegan, Glenn. Yes, I think he'll be enjoying this very much. Certainly the North East fans enjoy to see him here. 10 out of 10 for PR. <laughs> Don't know what the Manchester United fans are making of it, mind you. <laughs> Look at Sugarboy Malinga, he's got a Newcastle shirt on as well. Yes, he's trying to, to win a few of them. <laughs> Not to be outdone. <laughs> oh, they think of everything, don't they? <laughs> he's a big football fan as well. I wonder what else Malinga's got up his sleeve. Here's the tail of the tape. Ben is 32 now, but he's still four years younger than Malinga who is tall and rangy and at his best was very speedy and elusive. Good counter puncher, both comfortably inside the 12 stone limit. Slight reach advantage for Ben. Forty-sixth fight for Ben, 50th for Malingo, who's had a lot of rounds on the clock. He's been a pro for 15 years. Ben with that great knockout ratio there. You can see on the left of your picture, 77% Malinga, not such a big puncher, but good skills. Ladies and gentlemen, before we continue our action at this time, we ask you to please be upstanding for the playing of the national anthems of both the challenger and the champion, beginning with the national anthem of South Africa. Represented by Sugar Boy Malinga. Great sports fans up here in Newcastle. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance, boxing fans joining us across the UK on Sky Sports, and sports fans joining us around the world. We welcome you to the Newcastle Arena 
for the featured attraction of the evening, brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network and Don King Productions, and sponsored by Golden Wonder Knickknacks. This bout coming your way is scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. It's sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. The President, Jose Suleiman, Supervisor at Ringside, Roy Valaputin, along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the student in charge, Bob Graham. Introducing to you the physicians at Ringside, Dr. Alan Trotter and Dr. David Kipling. Timekeeper at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Albert Kelleher. And introducing to you the judges scoring this bout from ringside. Chuck Jumpa, Omar Minton, and Chuck Williams. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout. He'll be working in this, his 130th world title bout. Introducing Richard Steele. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. And now, ladies and Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white trunks with multicolored trim, representing the flag of South Africa, he hails from Ladysmith, Natal, South Africa. He weighed in at 11 stone, 11 pounds and 12 ounces, or 165 and 3 quarter U.S. pounds. His record stands at 40 wins, 9 losses, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making the fourth attempt at a world title. Please welcome the WBC number one ranked super middleweight contender, introducing uh, Tulani, Sugar Boy Malinga. opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, ready to fight out of the blue corner on my right. He is wearing black and white trunks, fighting out of Ilford, East London. He weighed in at 11 stone, 12 pounds and 10 ounces, or 166 and one half U.S. pounds. His outstanding record includes 42 wins, two losses and one draw, with 35 big wins coming by way of knockout as one of boxing's greats. Here is the former WBO middleweight world champion and tonight making the 10th defense of his current title. Please welcome the hard-hitting WBC super middleweight champion of the world known as the Dark Destroyer introducing Nigel. Fantastic reception Once again, for Ben. Once again, in charge now to give instructions, Richard Steele. in that epic fight with Chris Eubank in Birmingham in 1990. 16 fights unbeaten since Ben, and only eight of his 45 contests have gone the distance. Ben in the black and white stripes a la Newcastle United. Sugar boy Malingo, who didn't look good the last time we saw him here against Trevor Ambrose. He seemed to have lost some of his speed and elusiveness. Will he be better than that tonight? If he isn't better than that, he's in trouble. You can expect Malinga to be very defensive early on. We want to keep it nice and compact, use the jab. That's what Malinga will be aiming to do. Keep Ben on the end of that jab, use lateral movement. Look for counter punches as Ben comes in. That's how he dominated the second phase of the first fight they had in Birmingham. And many, many people agreed with Malinga when he said he was wrong that night. So there are technical problems for 
Ben to solve. He'll no doubt be looking to get inside and work the body. Because he's got to find a way past that long jab, get in close and use his powerful punches. Good right hand there from Malinga. Of course, there have been one or two instances, even against comparatively light hitters, where Ben has been shaken up a bit himself and given us all scares. There was a low blow in there from Ben. Malinga just made the referee aware of that. Reach advantage for the South African. Malinga keeping very compact, using the jab while Nikita looking for that left hook. The other thing with Malinga is he is normally a very durable fighter. The only man to have stopped him in his previous 49 was Roy Jones, a brilliant American who many people believe, in fact nearly all of us just believe, is the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world at the moment. And uh, Malinga went six rounds with him. Yeah, very well, and he's keeping himself very tight. Also following up with some right hands as well. Malinga. That's where Ben would like to get inside. Ben just not quite on target and close there. jabs again from Malinga who looks buoyant and confident and already a lot better than he did that night against Ambrose. This is Brunsil quick drying wood stain. You can't miss it. Welcome back to a sold out Newcastle Arena. Nigel Penn I would think lost that first round. I guess he just didn't do enough. He was finding it difficult. Malinga was using the jab very well. And I think he'd have done enough to win the first round. Trainer Kevin Sanders, Peter De Freitas, and Denny Mancini working the corner. The team that came together with that tragic but memorable fight against Gerald McClellan, which was a year and a week ago now. Voted this week, by the way, by the American boxing writers, as fight of last year, which it certainly was. Good start, wasn't it, by Malinga? It was a good start. Ben's just not busy enough. He's got to obviously try and get past that jab, and Malinga's sticking it out often enough. He's not quite settled into his rhythm, or hasn't been allowed to yet, Ben. with that long right hand occasionally. The general consensus is that since that last fight, Ben has improved quite a lot. He's a more rounded fighter, there's more lateral movement. He thinks a wee bit more. He was going through a dodgy spell, I think, the first time he fought Malinga. Now full blend super middle. Oh, the right hand again. He's... We'll want to get closer to this South African to start that these heavy hooks of his go. I think Ben maybe has to try and use his own jab. Just jab his way in and then let his hook score. Just loading up a little bit too much early on. And all the time, Malenga is getting that jab home and piling up the points. That was better for Ben. He's finding it hard to get in range, though. Malenga is working his strategy well, which is just to keep Ben off balance with the jab, keep him away. Ben has to find an answer to that. That's good work, Malinga. Just still doing enough just to keep Ben off balance. Good right to the body from Nigel Ben. And Malinga comes back with one of his own.
then getting closer. Because he's trying to work the point there, just to try and bring the hands down. He's got a very tight guard, Malinga. Both of these men have had high altitude training in the build-up. That was a good right, chopping right from Ben. Just seemed to hurt Malinga momentarily. But at the moment, the South African is dominating behind his jab in the main. Oh, and a good right hand as well. Very well timed, that punch. He just measured it perfectly with the jab and then came with a choppy right hand. Then not slipping many of these punches, is he? Not yet. No, he's standing right in front of Malinga. Tyson is back. Tyson Uncaged is the explosive new video featuring every big fight. Every bone-crushing knockout. He's mad. He's bad. He's back. Available from all Wolvers now. Welcome back, this fellow, Sugar Boy Malinga. He might be 36, but he's made a very impressive start here in this challenge to Ben's title. There's two rounds gone and two rounds up, I would say, for Malinga. And there was that good straight right hand, just measured it beautifully. Long jab, got the distance, and then a quick right hand. The reports were he was sharp, and he's certainly shown that at this moment. Danny Mancini with a final word to Ben. Let's see if he has got anything different in this third round. Has to be the question of whether Malinga stays the pace at the age of 36, no matter how much hard training he's done. And he really has done some, I can tell you. He's nearly three pounds inside the limit here. And this is a fellow who's once fought at light heavyweight. I don't think it's noticeable in the corner. They've told Ben now to go out and use his own jab. Don't try and rely on just trying to walk in and hit him. Box your way in behind the jab. And that's what he's doing. It's better from Ben. Punch to get out! No holding, no holding. Great. Ben clubbing away in close. Needs a good round here, though, you feel, Ben. A lot of people poo pooed Malinga's challenge, but he always had skills. Ben with the bookmakers eight to one on to defend his title successfully up here. Better so far in this round. Yes, he's managing to get closer in. He's also managing to do the opposite of Malinga. He's managing to put Malinga off balance now because he's using his own jab. Face most of the problems that a pro fighter can face in a boxing ring. It's not just the raw, wild slugger of his youthful days. Again, though, a good right hand from Malinga. It's a good shot from Ben. And again. Ben's best round so far. He might be just a nick that.
live from Las Vegas in the operator. Usually jab first, a lot sharper than that. Kevin Sanders from Peterborough doing the tournament to Nigel Penn. I think that's the reason you got a little bit more success in that round, Ben, using the jab. Well, Ben had a very tough fight with this fellow before, and he may well be getting another one here. Good right uppercut from Ben. He did improve in that third round. Closest round that last one, the hardest one to score so far. One or two people around us still thought Malinga won it. Maybe Ben just nicked it. You could argue that one. I think Malinga definitely won the first two, and he really does look up for the job. He's waited four years to get back to Nigel Ben, and he means to take advantage. And this is really good work from him again here at the start of this round. Yes, he's very sharp. He talks a good fight, but he's he's proven that now because he's fighting very well. He's sharp, he's got his hands are good, the defense is quite good. Jab and move tactics. This is the style that Ben has often had problems with. That was a good right hand in there, nice and fast from Melinda. Just seemed to steady Ben there. Just for the moment, Ben. Looking a wee bit bemused. Oh, a good right hand again. Shaken up, Ben. Bad moments, these. Not holding, not holding. Just seems to have lost the plot in the first half of this round, Ben, doesn't he? Yes, he's just a bit puzzled. The jabs are coming so often from Malinga. He just can't get past him. Then there's that choppy right hand that Malinga has. And Ben it just can't find any sort of de defense from it. Ben looking to let go with that right hand. And ben has to take another right from Malinga. Ben just changing tactics there. He's trying to draw Malinga in a little bit. He often does that when he's getting tired of chasing someone, just goes back under the ropes. There's a really confident air about Tulaney, Sugarboy and Melinda at the moment. Ben trying to brawl him, bustle him up close, work him over a bit. Just break that confident air. Good right hand, that's a good shot. That did rock Melinda a wee bit. His legs just stiffen when that one landed. That was the best thing that's happened so far tonight for Ben. Can he follow up? There's another clubbing right. And now he's drawing Malinga into more of his kind of fight. This is what Ben wants all the time, really, with you. This close quarter tear-up. Just a little bit of swelling by underneath the right eye of Ben. Swollen by the eyes, Ben. A great breakthrough in Formula One was active roll. Come on, work behind your jab, mate. Swelling underneath the right eye of Nigel Ben. That eye looks as if it's closing up. There was the good right hand. The eye went up very badly there. You can see just there on the eye, there's the, the start of the swelling, but it come up very quick indeed. Let's make no mistake about this. Nigel Ben has some big problems here. This is the fifth round. Now, this is the round that Malinga predicted he would win the fight. The 100 to 1 chance with the bookmakers. In that round, Malinga's corner said, just keep using the jab. That's what we practiced at home. Just keep using the jab. Malinga continuing to dominate, uses reach advantage at his jab but you're talking about a man in Nigel Ben who's come through any number of trench warfare type of battles before and prevailed Melinda's timing is looking so good he's looking very very sharp 
in his fourth world title attempt. He knows it's probably his last chance. He's determined to take it. And he's putting up a sensational performance so far. And that amounts to big problems for Nigel Benn, the man who's been around at the top for so long. From Malinga. It's certainly a very different sugar boy Malinga than we saw against Trevor Ambrose. A much more focused fighter. Completely different atmosphere, of course. That was just an undercard bout. Hardly anybody watching. If ever Ben needed one of his big punches to turn things around, it's now. But he just doesn't seem to be able to get his rhythm and his timing right. He's been picked up by that jab and just can't get any sort of flow in his work. And the right eye is closing. He can still see out of it, but for how much longer, you wonder? Eating up that jab of Malinga, which has been the key weapon in this fight, along with a hurtful-looking right hand. Malinga, who took Chris Eubank to a split decision though many people feel Eubank won that handily enough and again just can't find a way inside can he? just can't get past the jab also he's neglecting his own jab now Ben punch like that right on the side of the jaw and that was a good punch and Malinga did well to get up from that he took the full force of it how much has that taken out of his legs I wonder though there it is right hand chopping right hand and down went Malinga he did do well to get up and he was lucky that the bell wasn't too far away in the round perhaps yes that certainly leveled things up a bit he was looking very bad for Ben up till that point. Well, this is certainly a very, very dramatic fight already. And here comes the sixth round of it. Ben in his Newcastle United style shorts. Was that the breakthrough from it? Malingus had a minute to let his head clear and his legs freshen up again. Ben with that right eye, closing, closing all the time. Good right to the body from Ben. No holding, no holding, break, break. Ben really had to seize his opportunity here, keep the pressure on, the eyes looking bad. Because it was handy for him too, on the points business as well, Ben, that he was falling quite significantly behind and the WBC rules say that if there's a knockdown the rule has to uh, the round has to be scored 10-8 for the boxer who uh, puts his man down so Ben will have pulled back a bit needed to getting closer now Ben good jabs again from Malinga that's been a, a good weapon for him Decent right to the body from Ben. And Malinga, by the way, was down in the fifth round when he fought Chris Eubank. I'm just being reminded. And got up to go the full 12 rounds. Right hand again from Ben. Good shot. Malinga's legs just stiffened momentarily when that one went in, too. Malinga not dominating behind the jab so much in this round. Ben, for the umpteenth time in his career, dredging down to the depths of his soul. This man is a throwback though, isn't he? A fighter through and through, Ben. 
they'll have to nail him down for him to take the title away you feel sometimes yes when things aren't going well for him that's always when he's at his most dangerous and he proved it with that right hand can he do it again uppercut is a good shot from Ben Oh, right hand from Malinga. And the uppercut too. The South African is still plenty dangerous enough. And Ben is still has a lot of problems, you feel. right eye is worse of Ben's I would say it's nearly just a slit he's looking out of now as if he didn't have enough problems with the jab live from Las Vegas in the early hours of Sunday morning on March the halfway point in a very eventful fight indeed for the WBC super middleweight championship Nigel Ben with uh, Real problems early on in the fight, his eyes closing. But he's, you feel, having more success now. Yes, he's just starting to get closer. He's just starting to get to Malinga a little bit inside. He's starting to power, powerful shots over the top, powerful good uppercuts. Seventh round. Ben, who has this proud boast that he's never lost to an American, he won't be wanting to lose to a South African here. He just caught by a powerful jab, ran right into the eye again. Many people saw this as just a routine defense for Ben on the way to a big fight maybe with Steve Collins. He's proved anything but that. Go Holling! Go Holling! But we are moving into the second half of the fight. Do Malinga's legs hold out. And the left eye of Ben's looks to be swelling a bit as well. He's good back to his problems. Real lever into that Dallas, shot by the look of it, Ben. Dreadlocked hair now, bathed in sweat all around the head. Geordie fans in this Newcastle arena absolutely absorbed by this on the edge of their seats, as we all are here, wondering what happens next. Left only hit the gloves that time of Ben. Is Malinga back using his jab well? And he's got to try and stop that punch. Got to try and roll and come underneath, come back with his right hand. Watch your head. And the two body shots as they work close in on Ben. This is where all those runs on Europe's second highest mountain, Mount Tidy, at high altitude, will come in handy. This is where he gets the payback for all those miles in the bank. Doesn't do much sparring. He only did nine rounds, he told me, for the Gerald McClellan fight. Doesn't believe in aging himself with rounds in the gym. Ben looking for that right hand again, the one that worked so well for him in the fifth round. Again, the jab working well for Malinga. He's just picked his boxing up again in this round. Punching it out of him, punching it out of him. Ben is getting closer to him and managing to work inside more often significantly than he was in the first four rounds. Although that's an impressive burst from Malinga as he steps off there, isn't it?
We are live at the Newcastle Arena, and just look at that. Not a seat to be had, just as it will be at St. James's Park on Monday night for Newcastle against Manchester United. An intriguing fight, but the jab has worked very well again in this round, enough to win the round, I feel. Eighth round. Getting on towards the closing stages. Ben, who's been fighting with that bad swelling by the right eye since the closing stages of round four. Malinga, who doesn't seem to mark up at all. He's 36, but he's got the face, really, of a 20-year-old in boxing terms. This is a crafty fight, very experienced, good defense. Malinga. Ben's got it level. Remember a 10-8 round for Ben in the fifth with the knockdown, helping him in that respect. Again, a good right hand from Malinga. Certainly outboxed Ben quite a lot of the way here. Get a jab from Ben, but Malinga come back with a good right hand. Clubbing right from Malinga. This has all the makings of a pretty tight squeeze for Nigel Ben, to put it mildly. Ben's legs looking a bit heavy. It just looks as if it's all very hard for him out there. Nothing, nothing is flowing. None of his rhythm's there. does have that capacity to just switch on the electricity and move into a higher gear. Ben, there's that right hand again. That was a good shot. He needs a few more of those. Melinda looks strong, doesn't he? Yes, he still looks good. The leg still looks good. Good movement. So popping that long jab out. Oh, good right hand, that from Malinga. I think that just wobbled Ben a bit. He was a bit disorientated and disorganized from over. His head's cleared now. Slipping away from Nigel Ben. The lingers round. You know, and we've heard uh, what Glenn McCrory is making of developments here. Vicky Piper, this is... Um, well, it's got signs of being quite alarming for Ben, hasn't it? Yeah, he's being outboxed. I've got him a couple of rounds behind and uh, swollen on both eyes and being shaken quite badly throughout the last couple of rounds, really, especially that last round. We may see, um, here we see it, a great Malinga right hand, and he's boxing quite beautifully. I think we're going to have to see something special from, from uh, Ben to turn this around. As Malinga tires towards the end of this fight, that's when he's going to get his chance, and the right hand has Ben caught him with a couple of rounds ago. Then I think that's his only chance, really, because he's not working, he's, he's not boxing the right tactics. He should be coming in behind the jab, opening Malinga up, and then getting through with his heavy hooks. But at the moment, he's just um, not thinking. Thanks very much indeed. Yes, there was a little spell, wasn't there, around the third, fourth round, where Ben started to use the jab, but then he seemed to abandon it again. Ninth round. Malinga, I don't know by what margin, but I would think must be ahead on the scorecards at this point. He's had the Malinga one round ahead. Ben just can't up his work range. He's just got to pick the pace up. He's just got to try and think, do something different. That's how I have it. So it's looking good for Malinga at this point. It's a good boxing display. Without the knockdown in his favour, in round five, Ben would be in even deeper trouble. Can he find 
some inspiration here. Ninth round, Malinga must be beginning to feel that the winning post is starting to come into view for him. Remember, he was a 9-2 to two outsider with the bookmakers to win this fight. Same work again for Malinga, the long jab, just popping in away, keeping Ben busy, and then that fast right hand. Left hand from Ben, all snarling aggression. But finding it hard to really catch this man cleanly. Malinga continuing to catch him with sharper looking shots, really. There's more accuracy about Malinga's work, isn't there? Yes, they've really thought about this fight. And they've, they've decided the way to win is, is to use the jab, good movement, and he's, he's just turned our pass perfectly. And he's trying to pressure Malinga and nail him there, but he's finding it difficult to work even when he gets in close. As Malinga knows enough by this stage of his career in his 50th professional fight to get through. Crowd are trying to lift Nigel Benn in the same way that they lift their heroes from the Gallagate end. Ben needs all the noise that the Toon Army can raise. Yes, and physically, at this, at this stage, Malinga certainly looks the fresher of the two. It's pretty tired, Ben. Tired and battle-scarred. Gets it with a right over the top. Will Malinga's 36-year-old legs just start to feel as if they're treading through treacle late on? Ben's now got a cut by the mouth, I think, as well. sweet boxing skills and at the moment he's pulling away a bit yes another good round sticking to the pan the plan perfectly just use the jab plenty of movement Ben just can't lift the pace can't get past that jab that's causing a lot of damage to Ben around the face the blonde haired fellow on the far side there that is Nick Durant who handles sugar boy Malinga now his dad is Cliff Durant now People of a certain age will remember he used to play for Wolves and Charlton. Good left two just in there from Malinga, and then the jab. You see, Ben just can't get himself in close, can't get himself set, can't get his work going. And the right hand again. He's, he's used the jab very well, just measured Ben, and then popped him with that right hand. Well, Nigel Ben has nine minutes here to save his world title and this is 10th defense of the WBC's super middleweight crown the crown he took from Mauro Galvano Ben's been flirting with retirement talking of retirement at the end of the year is Malinga going to send him into retirement a little ahead of schedule He's just looking to try and use the jab a little more, Ben. We've obviously told him just to think, come on, you've got to do something different in there. Ben's father is over there on the far side shouting at him. I think everybody in this arena now realises that these are crisis times for Ben. Good shot, Ben. Needs more of those, though. He's had his successes, Ben, but they've been sporadic. And Malinga's been working away all the time with that rapier-like jab, thudding into Ben's face and following it in with good-looking right hands as well. This is a man who's been focused this fight and this task now for several months 
Bringing it just keeps beating Ben to the punch time and time again. And that's just keeping Ben off balance. He just can't get any momentum into his work. Even the minor successes that Ben are having are being cheered by these fans. has finally caught up with Nigel Benn. The epic battles with Chris Eubank and with Gerald McClellan. And one or two others as well. The Lingus corner are shouting to him, be first, because Ben is going. Yes, he's winning, winning this fight just with one hand, the left hand, just keeps popping it out. Punching it out! It's been a great punch for Malinga. He said early on the fight, just keep doing that. We've practiced it for so long. It's obviously been their plan right from the start. And it's worked a treat so far. And Ben, somehow, some way, against rising odds, turn this around. He gives Malinga a little pat on the backside as he goes past by way of a appreciation between fellow pros. Just you can tell this is getting very hard for Ben. He's really got to find some, some fire, some determination from somewhere. He wants this very hard. He's trained for so long. But it's just a big problem. He's just trying to get past that jab. There is Nigel Ben's father. Brent Warren looks worried. Caroline is there. She doesn't like Nigel boxing, though. She's always appreciated it's what's made his money, what he relishes. Come, Susan. Come, Susan. Okay, Nigel. Come on. Trying to lift him there. Peter De Freitas, Kevin Sanders, Denny Mancini. Desperately trying to lift him. But is there anything left? Are we watching the final moments here, really, of what's been a great career? That question has to be put at the moment. But ben is the kind of fighter, really, you can never, ever write out of your script. No, if there's any man, any fighter that can really pick something up and pull it out of the bag, it's Nigel Ben. And that's how I've got it three rounds ahead now for Malinga. A little bit of swelling maybe around Melinda's left eye as well, Ben. Getting to work behind the jab. He's needed to do that a lot more in this fight, you feel. Right hand. An uppercut from Melinda. Every time Ben has, or while he's been thinking and trying to set himself for those big punches, Melinda's just been picking him up with the jab, keeping him off balance. Yes, he's just kept nice and relaxed. Hands up, hands up well, Malinga. Just keep popping out that left hand. The right hand from Ben. <laughs> Judges, by the way, from Las Vegas, Mexico and Hawaii. Never any telling, of course, how they may be seeing things. Always worth remembering, this is simply our interpretation of it. He's pushing forward in this round, Ben, trying to, to corner, cut Malinga off. But Malinga just keeps using the jab, just keeping Ben off balance, and Ben is missing. Time is getting very short for Ben now. That's a good left hook, though. Can he get Malinga going late on? It's just I said that Ben comes out with a good left hook. But his knee now is pretty desperate, isn't it? Yes, and there were better punches inside from Malinga. He's still strong. He's still sharp, Malinga. The man who's done 600 rounds of sparring to prepare 
Good shots again from him. Picking Ben off. Ben looks disorganized in comparison. Malinga's come here with a game plan and he's made it work handsomely so far. Yes, things are looking hard for Ben here. He's just losing his way a little bit. He just, he just can't get anything going. A little bit of stress, blood coming from his mouth. Well, Nigel Ben is staring defeat squarely in the face here. Now just don't be going into fighting, just keep on that jab sharp, mate. Okay? Bad way. This way. You can win this now. All right. Just go left and right. Okay, well. Thank you, Rev. Thank you, Rev. Shot that jab. Keep it sustained for the three minutes, the okay? Left and right. You hear me? Big, big jab. Don't be fighting. Don't well, be fighting. Saying, don't fight him, jab him. I don't know how they think this is being scored in that yeah. corner. But I think at this stage he's really got to throw everything. I think he needs to knock out the wind then. Just about everyone in the arena wants him to win. Last round coming up. Can Ben, with his right eye just about shut, conjure up three minutes of his characteristic mayhem to somehow retrieve what looks a lost cause. Well, can he? A crescendo of excitement. Malinga must know he's very, very close, but Ben now is just letting the leather fly. Right, right. Malinga's corner are screaming at him to move, move. They think they've got this in the bag if their man can stay upright. Yes, it's certainly been a very good performance from Malinga. He's done everything right. They may well be conscious in that corner that they were on the wrong end of a dodgy decision, or what they thought was a dodgy decision before. They must fear that that could happen to them again. Oh, good right hand. First from Ben, an even better one by the look of it from Malinga. No, right hand seemed to be a slip. Just a slip, it looked like to me. Well, he's counting that as a knockdown. Ben is complaining that it was a slip. The corner are in absolute uproar about that. That could be absolutely crucial. He certainly landed with a punch, but Ben just lost his footing. There was no question in my mind of that being an authentic knock knockdown. But it's been scored as such. It looked like a slip. Ben really has to throw everything he's got now. Richard Steele didn't seem sure. But he went on with the count, and that means, under the rules, that Malinga will have to get this round 10-8 unless Ben comes back with something else. So even supposing the judges had it closer than we think, that could be absolutely critical. A minute to go. Is this the last minute of Nigel Ben's long, long reign as the WBC super middleweight champion? crowd are trying to lift him but it's oh so late now and Malinga back to that jab that served him so well he's used it like a spear the Zulu yes he's had wonderful rhythm with that jab and really Ben just hasn't been able to get out of the way of that punch and when he's got the jab going Malinga he's just teed Ben off with the right hand as well Well, we wondered if Malinga had the legs at 36 to get through it. Answer, yes. He's prepared so well. Ben's trying to lift it, trying to go to the well one last time. But time is just about up. This is going to go to the scorecards. Right hand from Malinga at the end. Ben needed a massive last couple of rounds, we think. There goes the bell to end it. Malinga smiles. He's lifted a lot. Ben's corner men hug him. They are not even pretending that they've won it. The Malinga can't believe they've got the title. And you'd have to say, if he wasn't given it, it would be robbery.
Yes, he certainly he, he thought he had a point the first time. I think you've got to believe he's won it, and he's won it very well indeed. It's been a wide points win, I would feel, for Malinga. Then tried, but he just couldn't get past that jab. It was a, a wonderful punch for Malinga. It served him so well in this fight. He'd obviously planned it for so long. Ben is being lifted around the ring, talking to the fans. But is this a farewell? Thank you. We waited. We await the uh, decision of the judges. Nick Durant is shouting down at us. I told you so. Well, he did in the, the flat that Malinga was staying in in Bayswater, London, the other day. He said, mark my words, we will be leaving London with the WBC belt around Sugar Boy's waist. The two fighters hug. Look at that in the ring. Look at that. There's never any ever for any bad feeling at all between the fighters here. There are the scorecards being collated. The judges from Las Vegas, Mexico and Hawaii will score it. But I think fair-minded people must say that Ben's title has gone here in his 10th defense. Well, maybe he'll press for a rematch, but you've got to say well done to Sugar Boy Malinga at the fourth time of asking, just like Frank Bruno, it looks like he's done it. It looks like he's done it. Yes, he said he'd worked so long, so hard with this fight, 600 rounds of sparring. He did it so well, he was very relaxed. Here's this last round controversy. Now, is this a knockdown or a slip? Yes, it looks as if he did get caught with a punch, but it looked as if the right leg just went away from him. And if there was any doubt, you'd have to score the last round 10-8 because of that under the WBC rules. We still await confirmation of how this has been scored by the three judges. It's a long wait. Uh, words it seems to be spreading around. There are some very gloomy faces among all the Ben Camp, Kevin Sanders looking around at me, the trainer, as if to say, yeah, I don't think we've got that, have we? We are getting word that this may be a split decision. Well, <laughs> there's no legislating for the scoring of the judges on these occasions. We're getting word that it's a split decision. That is purely unofficial. The Malinga camper walking around the ring saying and the new he's got that on his tracksuit well we seem to have confirmation here that it, this is a split decision and it's taking an eternity to get everything confirmed here we go jimmy lemon jr is waiting to tell us Here we go now. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge and ringside, Chuck Williams scores the bout 118-109 for Sugar Boy Malinga. <laughs> Judge and ringside, Chuck Jumpa scores the bout 114-112 to 112 for Nigel Ben. Judge and ringside, Omar Minton scores the match 115 to 111 in favor of the winner and new. Malinga has got it. Ben has lost his title. A split decision. The Las Vegas judge, Chuck Jumper, felt that Ben had won that. Don't ask me how. He did. Glenn. Unbelievable. Really, really unbelievable. I don't know how the judge could score the fight to Ben. Malinga did everything right. Very good left jab. Won in the fight. They said early on that that's what he was going to do. And he did it. And he did it so well. Last year, Franklin Roy Bruno defied the odds.
South Africa have been cleaning up in world sport in the past year or two, in rugby union, football, mostly in cricket, and now in boxing. And a big story here, as Sugar Boy Malinga not only robs Nigel Ben of his title, but sends Ben on the way into retirement. Uh, Barry McGuigan and Nicky Piper, we didn't think we were coming to watch the last rites in a great career, did we, tonight? No, I, I, I thought that Malinga w would have, uh, have digressed a lot more than this. He kept his boxing together. And, you know, sometimes you get a guy who you just can't beat, you can't come to terms with, and that seemed to be the case with Nigel tonight. This guy, Malinga, was brilliant. From the very offset, boxed brilliantly, used that right hand when it was necessary. And we can have a look at it. Right from the very offset, it started to work for him. Good right hand by Malinga in the fourth round here. Sets him up for a super shot and bangs that right hand through. Round four here, and you can see Malinga banging that jab in, and, and uh, he's got Ben confused, and he snaps his head round with that right hand. And again, in round five, Ben getting jabbed and jabbed and jabbed, and Malinga's jab was working brilliant. This is round five now. Watch his jab of Malinga, super jab.